Hi, this is Edward Awad. This video is part one in a series of four videos on cellular respiration and fermentation. In this video, I will talk about the importance of redox reactions in biology and give an overview of how cells harvest energy from glucose through redox reactions. Cells use redox reactions to extract free energy from nutrients that consist of reduced chemical compounds. But what is a redox reaction? In the redox reaction, the energy of electrons is transferred between reactants. The reactant whose atoms gain electrons becomes reduced, while the reactant whose atoms lose electrons is said to become oxidized. In other words, whenever one material is reduced, another is oxidized. Let's take an example of a redox reaction. This is the overall reaction of photosynthesis where light energy is used to form glucose from carbon dioxide and water molecules. In this reaction, the carbon atoms in carbon dioxide become reduced as they gain electrons by the transfer of hydrogen atoms from water. Conversely, the oxygen atoms in water molecules become oxidized as they lose their hydrogen atoms, since each hydrogen atom has an electron in its electron shell. Therefore, reduction can be defined as a gain of one or more electrons or the gain of one or more hydrogen atoms. And oxidation can be defined as the loss of one or more electrons or hydrogen atoms. So in biology, redox reactions in many cases involve the transfer of energy of electrons through the transfer of hydrogen atoms to carbon atoms. When we compare the covalent bond between carbon and hydrogen to that between carbon and oxygen, we see that the electrons in carbon and oxygen bonds are pulled closer to oxygen than carbon, whereas the electrons in carbon-hydrogen bond are closer to carbon, so the carbon-hydrogen covalent bonds possess a higher level of potential energy than the carbon-oxygen bonds. And this is mainly because the electrons are relatively far from the positive charges in an atomic nucleus. It is for this reason that molecules with a large number of carbon-hydrogen covalent bonds, such as carbohydrates and fats, store a great deal of potential energy that can be used by cells to make ATP. For most cells, the most common chemical fuel is glucose. The extraction of usable energy from glucose involves metabolic pathways that result in the oxidation of glucose and the capture of energy to make ATP. Glucose is also a key intermediary in cell metabolism. Cells use glucose to build fats, carbohydrates, and other compounds. Cells recover glucose by breaking down these molecules. During oxidation of glucose, Glucose acts as the reducing agent and is therefore becomes oxidized, while oxygen is the oxidizing agent, which is therefore reduced. The overall delta G of glucose redox reactions is negative. The complete oxidation of one mole of glucose releases 686 kilocalories of energy, or 2.87 million joules. The reaction is therefore highly exergonic, and it drives the endergonic formation of ATP. In cells, electrons are the most important sources of energy. When sugars and other reduced compounds are oxidized, some of their energy is used to make ATP. So in a way, we can say that the free energy made available in redox reactions is transferred to ATP, but this transfer is not a direct one. When glucose is oxidized, its electrons are transferred to intermediate molecules that are known as electron carriers. These electron carriers are involved in transferring these electrons through redox reactions to the final electron acceptor in a series of redox reactions that we will see in another video. By this transfer, free energy becomes available and is used in driving the formation of ATP from ADP 
or adenosine diphosphate and inorganic phosphate. An essential electron carrier involved in the metabolism of glucose is the coenzyme NAD or nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide. NAD exists in two forms, an oxidized form or NAD plus and a reduced form known as NADH. The reduction reaction of NADB plus is endergonic and therefore requires an input of energy, which originates from the oxidation of glucose, while the oxidation of NADH is an exergonic reaction, thus providing energy for the for formation of ATP. Cells oxidize high potential energy compounds, usually glucose, using three main metabolic pathways. The first pathway is glycolysis, in which glucose is partially oxidized and broken down into a three carbon molecule known as pyruvate. The second pathway is aerobic respiration or cellular respiration. This pathway requires the presence of molecular oxygen as the final electron acceptor. Aerobic respiration consists of three metabolic processes, pyruvate oxidation or processing, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain and oxidative phosphorylation. In aerobic respiration, the highly reduced glucose is completely oxidized to form carbon dioxide and molecular oxygen is reduced to form H2O. And finally, the third pathway is fermentation, which occurs in some cells when molecular oxygen is lacking or in low supply. In fermentation, glucose is partially oxidized, releasing less energy than aerobic respiration and resulting in the formation of ethanol or lactic acid. In part two video of cellular respiration and fermentation, we will look at glycolysis and aerobic respiration.